Welcome to Pierce Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're here for another Monday mini Yeah, Monday mini And today we're talking about focus and why focus is crucial. If you want to succeed in life, if you want to do well in reselling, there's no excuse. You've got to focus. And focus is going to, I'm trying to do like a motivational yeah, know, speech thing, you know? I didn't really have anything planned out, but I figured, you know, if you come in hard and talk like you mean it, because because we do, like focus is important. And today we're going to talk about how uh, focus is going to be a crucial element in your reselling journey, your career, being more profitable. And uh, so without, you know, the risk of sounding like a, a motivational speaker, uh, we're going to be talking about focus and how you can use it to focus on the right things and make your reselling business more successful. So what I mean focus is that as a reseller, it's really easy not to be focused, right? Because reselling, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of like that dog in uh, the movie Up right? Squirrel. Like you see something you're like, Oh, I want to pick that up. Or I want to pick that up. Or I just, I want to tell that, or you know what? Uh, I, I don't want to listen anymore. I want to go sourcing or, you know, I, I, I know that it's easier for me to sell clothes, but you know what? I want to pick up that massive item that I know I'm never going to ship, but it'd be pretty cool for me to pick up. Yeah. And, and it comes down to like, I'm, I'm really big on like mission, having a mission and, and, and kind of have like a mission statement. Like all those things kind of sound cheesy when you go to a company. It's like our mission statement is mm-hmm. and, and companies have a hard time like actually instilling that. But I think when it comes to your own life, like you have to have some kind of mission, some kind of thing that guides you. And when it comes to your business, like you're not just some, you know, random worker employee for a company that, you know, you're just pushing a cart. And so you feel like, oh, I don't really you know care about what happens here if I take a little bit longer. This is your business. This is your life. And so focus is really important. And being able to say, can I make sure that I'm running this like a legitimate business and and focus in a way where I'm optimizing my time, I'm optimizing my money, I'm taking care of paperwork. All of those things are right. So that at the end of the day, I'm profitable. And yeah, like you said, like you can be just like people can be lazy employees. There are a lot of lazy employees at companies. Companies, I mean, if you think about it, there's a I know so many different types of jobs that people have had, jobs that I've had in my life where really it's like three hours of work but you get paid for eight. So you stretch it out you spend a lot of time like talking to people and going really slow and doing stuff. Nobody's as efficient as they need to be because you're getting paid by the hour. But if you really are getting paid for the productivity that you have, which is what you are doing when you're a reseller, you've got to be focused. You've got to think I could be a lazy employee for myself, but the amount of money I make is going to be based off how focused I am and, and having a, a, a laser focus on your goal and doing the things you need to do to get there is going to make sure that you're making more money. Yeah. And so one of the things is I, I, I think that focusing makes it easier to source. And what I mean by that is, so I've gotten into a place where I know what not to source, right? I know not to source. We've talked about so many times, VCRs and DVDs. Not I know, that there's anything wrong with those. No, no, no. But for myself, I know I just, I won't list the other day. I was actually bought stuff from another reseller and they had some DVD players and they had, and, and the beauty of it was everything was tested. I didn't even have to test it, but I just knew even though it was tested, if I picked it up, it would just been sitting. Right. And so when you know what you're good at, what you're, you know, you find that you want to be able to list and what you're, you know, what you're capable of as far as like, Hey, I'm more willing to list a bunch of clothes. Like some people hate clothing, right? They, they hate dealing with it. I have a helper. So that kind of helps me out because I don't do a lot of the pictures and a lot of the measurements and so on. Uh, but when you know, when you're focused on one or two niches or three niches or whatever niches you're good at, and you just stay focused on that, it definitely makes your business a lot smoother and easier. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of even just like we talked about planning for sourcing, right? We've talked about that in the past a lot too. Uh, not Sometimes it's good to have flexibility. Like they, they say when it comes to time management, you should only fill out like 80% of your schedule and leave 20% open for the unknowns that are going to come up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at filling up my schedule hundred percent. And it's like, all right, everything's going good. I'm getting so much done today. And then all of a sudden I get an email from somebody and it takes, you know, an hour to resolve the situation, you know, my job or personal life or whatever. And it's like, if I would have, you know, scheduled in a little bit of time. So it's good to have time scheduled because you never know when it's like, oh my goodness, I just found out about this sale happening at the store. Mm -hmm. I can go over there right now. But having a planned focus of, okay, Mondays and Tuesdays are the days that I go to thrift stores. And that's when I source or, and then, you know, Saturday mornings is when I go to garage sales, having that plan and that schedule. Cause it's easy to say like, yeah, I'm my own boss. I have lots of flexibility. 
and you want to be able to utilize that flexibility, but actually, and this kind of goes back to what I say, focus, and, and in some ways it's discipline, mm-hmm. having a certain amount of discipline will actually help you because if you know, no matter what, Monday morning between nine to 12, I go to these thrift stores or I go to these retail stores and that's when I source, you actually have more freedom throughout the week because then you're like, yeah, my, my sourcing's done. Now I can, I can go to this party. I can go to this thing. But if you're always kind of just going on the fly and doing, you end up putting things off and ends up, and then when you're like, oh, I'll just go tomorrow. Well, then that's when your car breaks down or something happens, right? But when you have that discipline, that laser focus, you're actually able to source more efficiently, not just the items you're picking up, but when you're going, where you're going, uh, what's the best places at the, the right times. And you're being, you're being, uh, uh, proactive about that and you're actually being intentional about your sourcing and not just kind of willy nilly doing it. Yeah. Agreed. And so that goes along with once you source everything that, you know, you know, you're good at, it's going to be a lot easier to list. So for example, like I, I sell Harley and I sell Hawaiian shirts and shoes and a bunch of, a few other items, but usually I pick them up in bulk, right? So when I'm listing, if I'm listing 30 Hawaiian shirts and they're all the same brand, it makes it real easy. Right. Just so similar, so similar, so similar. Change a few keywords. I don't really have to change my shipping because it's all the same shipping. Right. I just have to put new pictures, change a couple item specifics, I change some keywords in my title, and I'm good to go. Right. I mean, I got to put the measurements and all that, but it's just easier because I'm just doing so similar, so similar, so similar, so similar. And you're able to list a lot faster. So if you're focused on just certain goods that you're going to pick up, it's going to definitely help you. Now, on top of that, staying organized allows you to focus, right? Instead of, you know, your focus being spent two hours looking through everything to try to find what's sold. If you have it all organized and you have an inventory plan, you can spend 30 seconds and that's going to help you continue moving on in your reselling. Oh yeah. I mean, I think of like when I first became a teacher, I was really good at, all right, this is what I'm doing for the lesson. I printed out the stuff for the week. I figured out what worked. I'd do little reflections at the end of the day. Okay, like this part of the lesson didn't work. This took this long. And I kept track on like a thing, like how long is it going to take me to get through this unit? I kept all of my paperwork, like, all right, here's the test. Here's then I put them in like clear plastic, you know, sheet protectors mm-hmm. inside of binders. And it's like this unit is all put together. My first couple of years of teaching, I did that. And then like the next year, it's like easy peasy. I just pull that unit out. Everything is good to go. I see, oh, this takes a week. And I can look at the calendar and figure it out. But then after I got kind of comfortable with re, uh, with teaching, it was like I stopped being as focused on organizing like that. Mm. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I had this really cool project I did last year. Where is that? And I'm looking through binders. I'm looking through lots of paper and I'm like, I can't find it. And it's the same thing with reselling. If you're focused, if you're organized with your inventory, if you're organized and it takes time, it's, it's hard because it, you think you're losing time when you spend time organizing your stuff, going through, making sure everything's in the right place, making sure you're cleaning up your workspace. All of those things take time but they ultimately save you a ton of time in the long run. Like they, you might spend an hour doing something, but it can save you 10 hours over the course of the next month or two because you got organized. So being focused in organization is going to be crucial. And it's easy to get kind of lax and lazy with that stuff because oh, I know how to do this. I've done this long enough. And eventually you don't realize how you're, you're losing five minutes here, five minutes there. And it's worth it at times just to get focused and organize and be organized so that you can focus. Having a clean workspace really helps out. All of those things are going to help you stay on track. Uh, the next thing is it makes it easier to ship. And that kind of goes along with what I was saying is, do you have a, a decent shipping station set up? Do you know where your boxes are? Is it easy to reach? Uh, what about your, your, your bubble wrap, your paper, your tape is all of that stuff together, your scale. Uh, we've gotten into a system where we know how to do it. I mean, people have asked us before, cause we don't have any internet. How do you do the shipping? Well, mm-hmm. We literally, in our, our eBay shed, we do all of our, our boxing. We box it there. We measure it. We weigh it. We write the measurements on the boxes. We take them all to the house. Or we don't write them on the boxes. We write them we write what the item is on the box. But on a separate piece of paper, we write all the measurements for the items. And then we go into the house and we hotspot to our phone and print all the labels at one time. So that's the shipping situation that works for us because of our, our situation not having internet. But you've got to figure out a system that's going to work. Cause if you're, if you're not organized in, in your shipping as well, it's going to take you a lot longer to find the items. It's going to take you a lot longer to pack the items, to get those items out the door. And ultimately that's costing you money because if you're taking, you know, three hours to ship, what should take you two hours, that's either an hour of free time that you can use for something, or that's time from sourcing or listing or something else. And again, if you're focused on your sourcing, right, you what you're picking up, it should be easy to ship what you're picking up, 
right? Because you already have it in play. You know that you're only going to, let's say you only do clothing. You know, you're only going to sell t-shirts and you're going to sell shoes and you're going to sell jackets. So you have your three main ways of shipping those items. It's all organized. It's already in your shipping policies. And so shipping now is easy, right? You sell a shirt. You already know what, where the envelope is. You already know, you know, how much it's going to cost and you just take care of it super fast. Right. And if it's a pair of shoes, for example, I know most of my stuff is flat rate or in the shoe box. And so it doesn't take very much time. I don't have to think about it because I'm already focused and already know what I'm doing with that item. And the last thing here is same focus allows you to scale. I, you know, I, I speaking to myself, I have found that when I was a reseller where I would just pick up anything and everything, which I, I still sometimes do, uh, but primarily I've stuck to vintage clothing and I have found that I've become a better seller by focusing on vintage clothing because I know, you know, what to look for. I know how to negotiate better for vintage clothing. Uh, and I know how to price. I know how to ship. And so staying focused on that has helped me become better. Now, I'm not anywhere close to being a great vintage seller, but I, I'm definitely growing instead of before where it's like, OK, I knew a little bit about this. I knew a little bit about that. And I ended up being, you know, a, a jack of all trades, but ended up being, you know, a jack of one or two or me. <laughs> some people would say none. But I had enough knowledge, uh, you know, in some areas where now you know, it's very easy. Like I, the other day, it's, it's interesting because I can go into thrift stores and I can pick up things way faster now than I could even a year ago because it doesn't take me much to understand what I should leave behind and what I should pick up. Where before, because I was trying to f pick up everything, I would spend a lot more time researching and I wouldn't be as efficient because I wasn't focused. So I couldn't scale. So one of the reasons I've been able to scale the last year, and I'm not there yet, uh, but I'm getting there is as a result of staying focused. So hopefully these five things here helped you, you know, source better, list better, ship better, uh, and, you know, stay organized and ultimately scale by maintaining focus. And with that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant and be reselling leads. Peace.